everyone and welcome back to Mouse Mini Loft. Today we are taking a break from Games Workshop and we're going to be doing some Kingdom Death Monster and specifically the Gambler's Chest and I am really excited to start building all the minis from this place because I don't know there's something about the grotesque nature of just the whole game that I weirdly like. I figure I'd start with some big crazy piece because those are the most exciting. Why not? If it's making me happy and making me excited to paint, I say go for it, even if it looks like a huge challenge. And this one is going to be a huge challenge. So today we're going to be doing none other than the Gambler. It is essentially one giant human flesh ball with a guy holding it. It's going to be a lot of skin, but I've talked about it in some of my earlier videos and I definitely want to keep practicing painting skin because I think painting skin really well is something that will be useful for many years to come on my painting journey and this is a really exciting project. Now I have an idea on how I want to go about painting this but I need to tell you guys a little bit of my thought process behind it. These past few weeks while I've been painting and during the month of October I decided to start watching Hannibal and I've gotten really hooked but one of the things that when I saw this specific model made me immediately pop into my mind was one of the episodes in Hannibal where one of the serial killers did this giant human mural in like a water cistern and you looked at it from the top down and it would it was supposed to be this this giant palette of all the skin colors blending from darkest to lightest in this sort of circular homage to human skin. It was super weird, but the moment I saw this, not only were they positioned extremely similarly to that show, I also thought it would be such a cool idea to start at one end being really dark colored skin and then moving all the way to the other in really light colored skin and that way it just sort of looks like this giant color wheel almost of the skins of the human body. I thought that would look really cool. It sounds like a major challenge and I'm probably going to be incredibly overwhelmed. Yeah that's the plan. Um, I'm getting my ideas from fictional serial killers. I don't know what that uh, <laughs> really says about my my head. Uh, enough talking, let's do it. I tried doing the putty on the top part because that's the most obvious to look at. I don't know if I'm doing it right. I don't know if I have the right tools for it. I had bought just some simple clay like pottery carving tools. It doesn't look good and I don't really know how in the world to fix it. Like. Maybe when it's primed, it won't be so noticeable. And once it's fully dry, I can try and scrape out some of that extra stuff. I don't know, maybe it's supposed to be easier on models that aren't, that don't have so many gaps and ridges. And if it's a flat surface, it's probably a bit easier to just clean up a flat line that you see in between. And it's not a big deal, but yeah, I, don't really like it and I don't think I'm gonna continue with the rest of the model fixing it. I think I'm just gonna see how that top works. Thankfully with Kingdom Death it kind of fits the whole look if it looks messy. So I'm not gonna worry too much about it but yeah I I know I'm not doing it right and I don't know what else to do. So I'm gonna wait for it to set and then I'm gonna try and clean it up and then I'll start priming it. So I'll see you then.
Oh my gosh, do I have so much to think about. I just, <laughs> this project, I, I knew it was gonna be hard and I knew it was gonna take a long time, but I didn't even think about my like plans on what I was going to do in order to tackle this, which I don't know why, I was just so excited to paint, I just jumped right in. And then about halfway through hand painting each one of these people on the sphere, I was like, what am I doing? I should have pulled out the airbrush and started airbrushing this because obviously if I wanted to do a smooth gradient, an airbrush would be perfect for the situation. But I didn't even think about it because I thought, well, they're individual humans and they need to have an individual skin color even though it's all gonna blend in. <laughs> what a dumb idea, what a bad idea. I'm, I'm still pushing through though, cause I'm like, you know what? I'm already this far, doing the rest of it, it's gonna take, you know, too long to set up the airbrush and do it. Five hours later, I just put down the base coat for all these humans and I'm like, oh no, I have to do, you know, at least minor highlights or something, or like a second coat because you could see through it and see the, the undercoat that I had. So I slept on it and I woke up this morning and I tried putting on like a wash, a flesh wash, and it was looking so bad. I said, that's it, that's it. I gotta get this airbrush going. And of course the airbrush, it took like an hour of troubleshooting and stuff because I'm still, you know, learning it and I realized finally that it was because I didn't have it watered down or like thinned enough my paints until I finally got it working. And then even after all of that, it just took me an extra like 30, 45 minutes of airbrushing and now I have a smooth, perfect looking gradient and I'm just going, that's still half the time of me hand painting all of these. <sighs> Why did I do this to myself? Why? So now I'm gonna have to rush the rest of him or this video is not coming out this week and I really wanted to come out because it's gonna look great. But there they all are. It's a smooth enough gradient. I think if I'd spent like a whole month on this, I probably could have had it perfectly blended. But with the airbrush helping clean it up and make it look really smooth, it looks really cool. My biggest worry right now is what am I going to do in terms of highlighting and stuff like that because the flush wash just was not looking good at least on the paler skin and but it needs something it needs some sort of dimension the wash didn't look too bad on the darker skin tones though so i'm thinking i'll do wash on one half and then the other half i can maybe dry brush on some highlighting or just dry brush it all i still have to decide i don't know i just don't want to ruin what i've done with the airbrush now that i finally have it fixed and as for the actual gambler underneath holding the sphere i'm just gonna have to do a nice quick and dirty speed paint with acrylic highlights and call it good or else there's no way i'm gonna get it done because i have all day today and all day tomorrow and that's it. And when I say all day, I mean like two more hours today and maybe like four to five hours tomorrow. I mean, I can stay up really late. If I stay up super late, one or 2 a.m., I can get more done, obviously, but I don't know if I have mental capacity to do that. <laughs> so yeah, that's where I'm at. Um, I'll fill you guys in at the end of the day today. Wish me luck. Why did I do this to myself? Why? You would think I've learned by now, but hopefully this is at least, I don't know, entertaining or something, watching me just absolutely do the stupidest things I could possibly think of. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Let's keep painting.
Here I am at the end of the day and I'm surprisingly done. I'm really, really glad that I went with this sort of idea because it feels so interesting to look at. Like I keep looking at the different colors and being like, wow, like there's, the gradient just looks so cool to me. I'm so glad that I decided to follow my Hannibal heart and do something like this. I hope I put enough detail on them. I think coming back with the airbrush saved me and I know I wasted so much time with like a base coat. I'm glad it turned out well in the end. I did a lot of dry brushing to try and see if I can add some more dimension and it definitely helped, but I especially think the lighter half of the skin tone, especially like the really pale white skin, just looks too one dimensional and I don't want to put a wash on it because that wash when I tried it on one made it look so bad and too yellowish in tone because I really wanted to do more of that reddish pinkish skin tone. I don't have any sort of wash that could make that. I would probably have to hand low light and then highlight all of that. And I personally don't want to do that. I really don't. If someone else does that and does something similar like this, please show me because that sounds like it would be even better. I'm really happy with how I did the lantern with the highlighting. I thought it looks really nice. The one thing that I don't know if it's my actual paint that's weird or not, but I think his shirt, like his pants shirt thing, not the cloak itself, it looks too sh glossy and like flat and I dry brushed stuff on top of it. I tried putting more highlights and that color just, just looks that way. And I don't know, but that's such a, a minor thing compared to everything else. I love the way the cape turned out. Everyone, speed paints are your friend. If you want something fast done that looks good, all I did was throw on some speed paint and then do a few dry brushes to like bring out some colors and things like that. My favorite cloak so far that I've d personally done myself. Here he is, the gambler. Thank you guys for watching and seeing me panic in all of this. I'm really glad that I actually ended up finishing in a reasonable amount of time and being satisfied with the results. I will see you guys on the next one. Bye.